In this activity, we are starting to look at practical diode circuits. And diodes are extremely important for rectifiers. Here we're going to start with a halfway rectifier, and then we're going to look at peak detectors. So let me write some notes here. Rectifier circuits. What are these? Well, these are circuits that convert AC to DC signals. Now, what are these useful for? What are some of the applications? Practical applications. They are important for power supplies. You need to be able to do this in power supplies. Battery charging circuits. You need this in communication circuits, like for the modulation. Etc. Again, we are learning building blocks in electronics. And this is one of the problems, the problem of rectification that we need to solve. Now, diodes are very good for rectification. And so let's start with a halfway rectifier that is the simplest rectifier. And in terms of a skeleton, this is what we have. Here we have an AC source. I'm going to represent this as a VS of T, positive minus. I'm going to say, okay, this is, we can model it with some. Amp with some amplitude and then either a cosine or a sine, cosine of omega t. If we connect this source with a diode and then we connect it to the load, and to right here the load circuit RL, so this is plus minus and this is the output, it's a function of time we have a, rectifi a rectifier circuit. Let's analyze it. If we think about, as a function of time, of your input voltage, actually I'm doing a sign, Okay, so this one's plus a phase. This is Vm. So this is a plot of your input. This is Vs of t. And uh, I could have a phase, but I'm just going to put this as a sign, okay? Sign of omega t, based on the representation that I did. How will this circuit behave? Now, notice that when the voltage is positive, the p-type of the junction is going to be more positive than the n-type. And that's what we call forward bias. Ideally, then, this is like a closed switch. Right? So that's a region where we have forward bias. And then we have another region where this happens, and we, the, you have now the N region more positive than the P region, and the diode is going to be an open. And then this repeats again. So if you were to use the ideal diode model, what you find right, is that you will get a waveform just like this, let me make it a little bit thicker. Conducts, open circuit. Conducts, open circuit. And this will represent the output voltage using the ideal model. Now, we can use the second approximation. And in the second approximation of the diode, when we are conducting, we have a voltage drop of around 0.7 volts. 
And so we could think that in the ideal approximation, until the voltage here is not at least 0.7 volts, it doesn't conduct, so it takes a little bit of time. And then we start conducting. Right? Start conducting. And so this is a rectification that we are doing where the difference here is 0 0.7 volts. Okay? Remember, this is reverse bias, forward bias. Yeah. And so, what is the output? As we have seen it, for an input that is a sinusoidal input, our output, Vs of t, it's going to be a rectify output, a DC signal, Now, in the second part of the activity, we are going to look at doing a, adding a capacitor in order to change the behavior of the circuit so that we don't not only do this so maybe we can get it a little bit more constant or ideally constant to create a power supply or to create a peak detector that is useful in many circuits. So with that, let's stop here. Thank you. Oh, the second. Peak inverse voltage. The peak inverse voltage is equal to Vm. This is the maximum voltage that you have in the reverse bias where the, the diode is operating in reverse bias. Remember that we need to make sure that it is less than the breakdown voltage of the diode. Okay, so the maximum reverse bias voltage needs to be less than the breakdown voltage. Thank you.